In today's video, I'm going to cover the best practice amps that I've tested personally in one capacity or another. Now, I've been doing this YouTube channel for over 15 years, which is insane. We're over 120 million views. And in that amount of time, I've tested so many different practice amplifiers. So this will cover everything that I've showcased that I think stood out from the rest of the pack. Now, these won't be just super expensive amplifiers. They won't just be entry level amplifiers. I picked a good selection of stuff depending on your budget and particular needs. Some people will like amplifiers are a little bit more simple and other people will want all the features under the sun. So I've got a really great list. Just know these aren't in any particular order because it's a really hard thing to rank them based on their tones. I think all of these are great in their own way and I'll talk more about it throughout this video. Now, if you can do me a favor and get this video to 1000 thumbs up, that would be awesome. I put a lot of work and research back into my old content to get this list together. I really felt like these were the standouts of the bunch. While I've tested so many different practice amplifiers, I clearly haven't tested them all. And if your amplifier is not on this list, maybe I didn't check it out, but I'll link down to my playlist of all of the amplifiers on this list anyway. So you can go check that out after this video. That link will be in the description box. Let's get into it. All right, let's kick this off. I have to start with the new X Mighty Light BT Mark II. And this could also translate, of course, over to the original version, which was my favorite small practice amplifier at the time. And then UX made this. So this is a three watt practice amplifier. It can be powered either with double A batteries. There's six double A battery slots at the back. You can power it via USB-C on the back as well. It has USB-C port and you can also run it off a dedicated power supply. What this means is if you have a battery bank like this or a computer port, whatever the case may be, you can power the amplifier. This amplifier is cheaper than the Positive Grid Spark Go and there's no DLC, which is that downloadable license content. So you're not gonna get charged extra through the app when you need to actually use this. It's just going to work. And I think this is one of the big positives. Once you've gone through the process of connecting this to the app and then setting up your favorite tones, you can record your favorite presets just by using the button on the top, which means you don't need to then connect it to the phone ever again. You can just dial it in, clean, dirty, high gain, whatever the case may be. You can add effects and all that kind of stuff. And then you can just recall that sound by using the button on the top. This thing's awesome and I can highly recommend it. This amplifier represents the best value for money and overall versatility out of all of them. And I'll explain why. So. This is not only a great little desktop practice amplifier that you can then connect to your phone, set up a whole bunch of tones and recall them nice and simply. It has a whole bunch of different effects built in and you can also use it as a dedicated audio interface. So this will give you guitar tones you won't be able to achieve just by miking up an amp in the room. The produced tracks out of this going directly into an audio interface sound phenomenal. And I can highly recommend this if you're on a budget, looking to record an album or whatever the case may be. The tones in this are really something special. Up next is the Positive Grid Spark Go, and I like this just enough to add it to the list. Now, this is very small and compact. It's a smaller unit than that of the new XBT Lite Mark II. So if you're looking for a travel amplifier that you want to use at low volumes, that has a built-in rechargeable battery, this is definitely the way to go. It saves you having to worry about either double A batteries or buying rechargeable batteries or powering it via some other means. So once you charge it up, you get plenty of battery life and it's very small in the hand. Now, given how small this amplifier is, it is louder than you think. And like the BT Lite Mark II, it can also be used as an audio interface. So if you just want to plug it into your computer and record some really great guitar tones, you can do that as well. Just know that the size of this amplifier is very small and I wouldn't expect too much out of it. If you're looking for an amp that really fills the room, I've got some better recommendations coming up shortly. The Positive Grid Spark Go allows you to jam along to your favorite songs thanks to that Bluetooth connectivity but just know the app does contain a lot of DLC, which is paid content. So if you wanna get some of the jam tracks that they provide and other resources, you will be paying extra. This amplifier is also designed to kind of click onto your guitar strap, but I don't really like using it like that. So I prefer to use it on a desk. And if you're using a cable, it's really easy to sort of topple over. So you kind of have to use this with a wireless pack if you want to just let it sit on a desk. Otherwise, you're going to knock it off the table if the cable has any tension on it, which means it's another thing to buy if you don't already have a wireless pack. So just keep that in mind. But again, 
This is a really great sounding amp considering just how tiny it is. All right, up next is arguably my favorite practice amplifier if I just wanna focus on the playing and less about the tones, and this is the Joyo Jam Buddy. The simplicity of this makes so much sense, and I love the fact it's a flat design, so you can put it on the floor and use it like a pedal and change channels and so forth. So this is a very simple amplifier. It essentially gives you a clean channel, a crunch channel, and a high gain channel. And that high gain channel is kind of reminiscent of the sort of higher gain Santana tones. It's got a really nice clean channel, but it's not a very loud amplifier. I think this is arguably the best practice tool because you turn it on, you switch channels, and you don't have to go fiddling around with a million different effects. Now, maybe the biggest limitation of this is it doesn't have any reverb, but we do get an analog delay. And if you know the channel, you know how much I like analog delay. So you can dial that in and get a nice little sort of slapback sound or you know, a more sort of broader sounding analog delay tone. So this is great. It gives you Bluetooth connectivity. You can jam along from your phone. You can just connect it directly, play music back and jam at the same time. I think the tones out of this sound really great. On the front of the amplifier, we get two foot switches. Now this one on this side allows you to switch between the clean and the drive channel. And then you can cycle between the crunch and high gain channel using this foot switch over here. This is the amplifier I choose to use anytime I haven't played for a while and I'm coming back working on my chops because it's very simple. I can focus on the playing. I don't have to worry about all these different tones and having too many different effects. I can dial up clean tone with just a little bit of delay, or of course I can go over to the crunch or high gain tones depending on the style of music I'm playing. But this is so good. It has a built-in rechargeable battery. You get like eight hours of battery life or something like that out of it. I can't quite remember, but it just keeps on going on and on. I love this thing. It's definitely one of my favorite practice amps of all time. Up next, we have the Moor or Moor Hornet. Now this is the white or cream version. You can also get this in other colors. I've also got the black one somewhere, but after moving, I'm not sure exactly where it is. But depending on the color of the amplifier will depend on the tones that you get. Now this is a really great unit. It doesn't run on batteries. You literally just run it on the provided power supply. The plugs in on the back, you get a headphone output. You also get an auxiliary in. Now the cool thing about this is there's no app connectivity and being that it's a bigger amplifier we get a bigger sound than some of the others but the cool thing about this it's a digital modeling amplifier but it's made with simplicity in mind so on the top of the amplifier we have a panel with a whole bunch of different effects and presets now you can run this in live mode which allows you just to run it and not save anything or you can run it in preset mode save your presets and recall them just by using the button on the top this amplifier is fully loaded with delay, reverb, and modulation effects. You can also get a really beautiful clean tone. You can run bass into this, and you can also run acoustic guitar into it, depending on the model that you buy. I think this is the one with the acoustic and bass option, and it is, as you can see from the front here. So. Now, when I first reviewed this amplifier, I definitely didn't have the mic placement optimized for this particular speaker. I wasn't exactly sure where it is because it's a bit hard to see, but feeling around, I know in hindsight, I had the mic in the wrong spot, but this sounds way better in the room than it does on my review video. And I'll be playing a quick sample of it over this particular part of the video so you can get a good sense of what I can do. But I'm a big fan of these amplifiers and they represent excellent value for money. If you're looking for something that you don't have to worry about apps and all that kind of stuff and you don't want to be too loud, this is still a really great choice. And unlike some of the smaller amplifiers, this won't have as much of a problem once you start turning the volume up with that speaker distortion. So these are great. I can highly recommend them. Check them out. Over to a half watt tube head from the folks over at Hageman. This is handmade in Honolulu, Hawaii. And this is unlike any other small watt rated amplifier because the cool thing about this is it actually gives you clean headroom. It's unheard of with a half watt amplifier. So this is half a watt, like 0.5 watts. It's not at all super loud, but it still allows you to get a really great clean tone with that nice warm sound that the tube or valve amplifiers are known for. And it allows you also then to run it into any cabinet of your choice. One of the strengths of this amplifier 
is the fact that the output to the speaker can handle pretty much anything. So if you've got a four, eight or 16 ohm speaker, this is fully compatible. I love this, it's a really great feature. There's also a headphone output on the back as well if you wanna practice that way. But I think the strength of this is you can run this into any cabinet that you've got and you're going to get a beautiful clean tone. This amplifier also handles pedals beautifully thanks to it being a full-blown tube amp. Now, while the aesthetic of this might not be for everybody, I really like this. And when I did my initial review of this, I called this the best sub one watt amplifier in the world. And I think it is, but you're going to be paying more for it because it is made in the US and it's also an original circuit. It's not a copy of another amp or anything like that. One of the biggest benefits of this amplifier over a digital modeling amplifier is this handles pedals beautifully being that it's an actual tube amp. So you can run this with your favorite pedal board or set up whatever the case may be out into a speaker or a two notes cap door X or anything if you want to record and you're going to get excellent tones. You can get this amplifier to the sweet spot just by pushing the volume most of the way up. It gets to that sort of edge of breakup sound, but it never gets super saturated like a lot of other low watt amplifiers. So it's a great pedal platform. You can really dial this into the sweet spot, then hit the front end with a Tube Screamer, Clon or Blues Driver, whatever it is you've got. <laughs> While you will be paying more for this amplifier than a lot of the others, if you plan on using pedals, get a tube amp. It's going to make the world of difference when you want to run your effects into it. We get a real 12H7 in the preamp, and in the power section, we have a 12BH7. And again, you get lots of clean headroom. I think Hageman have done a really great thing with this amplifier. I'll link down to his shop down in the description box below. If you've been following my channel over the last 10 or 15 years or so, you know I'm a huge fan of the Bugera V5 Infinium. This is another great little home practice amplifier for a number of different reasons, which I'll cover right now. So this amplifier is small. It's a real tube amplifier. So we get a 12 x 7 in the preamp and an EL84. But before we talk about the rest of the pros, I wanted to say that I found the stock tubes almost unusable. They rattle, they have a lot of oscillation. Pull them out, put in a set of JJ's or whatever other brand you want to put in there, and it will make the world of difference to that tube oscillation and rattle. I made that modification and it drastically improved the overall quality of the sound of the amplifier. While it didn't change the tone of the amplifier that much, it completely removed all that oscillation and rattle from the cheap Chinese tubes they put in there. So yeah, make that mod and you'll be in a happy place. Now let's get back to the positive. So this has an eight inch speaker and the little speaker that they put in there really does sound quite good. Now, some people find this amplifier not quite bright enough and I get that as well. I used to use it with the tone control all the way up, but it has a really great sounding digital spring reverb. So you can get a nice reverb sound out of this amplifier, run it with pedals and you're good to go. Now this amp is completely switchable. So at its full power at five watts, it's probably a little bit too loud for most home practice situations because if, especially if you're in an apartment, five watts is too loud, but you can switch it down to one watt, which is awesome, or 0.1 watt, which is perfect if you just wanna play at home. Now these amplifiers have increased in price almost twice the amount <laughs> since I first bought mine. I just looked at the price, they're literally 500 Australian dollars. I think I paid like 249 for mine back in the day. So yeah, they've sort of got crept up in price, but they're still really good. Just know you probably most likely will have to switch out the power and preamp tubes. It's an easy mod to make, but if you, yours rattles and that will be the cause of the rattle most likely and it has a really great sounding reverb. And while I would have loved to have just had a little bit more top end with this amplifier, I still think it's a really great amplifier for home practice. And if you've got an EQ pedal, this is still a really great choice. It's an all-in-one amplifier that's completely switchable from five to one to 0.1 watts. So you're getting a very functional amplifier. And for the price, it's still pretty decent value. Up next is an amplifier you can't find new anymore. You'll have to pick this up on the used market somewhere and I'll link down a reverb and see if they've got any, I'm not too sure. So check that out in the description. But this is the Vox Pathfinder 15R. I had the opportunity to play one of these on two separate occasions, both in a store and also at a gig. What? <laughs> I'll talk about that in just a moment. But this is a completely solid state amplifier basically made in the early 2000s. And this has a legit Vox tone. You also get a boost option as well for higher gain tones. You get a full two band EQ 
It also comes with tremolo and reverb. So the most current versions of these amplifiers remove the reverb, which doesn't sound anywhere near as nice to my ear. So if you can live without reverb, you can still buy the 15 version, but the 15R has the reverb and the reverb on these amplifiers is phenomenal. Sometimes I don't understand why companies make those changes. It might've been a cost thing, but if you can find the 15R, it's definitely worth checking out. Like I mentioned, I heard this amplifier at a gig and I also had an opportunity to play through it on a jam set once. So this amplifier, it's 15 watts, but it has a full blown speaker output and we were running it into a two x 12 Fender cabinet and it was ridiculously good for its size. So a 15 watt amp into a much bigger cabinet and it was completely usable. I couldn't believe what I was saying. I was like, is that a Vox 15R? And he's like, yep. I'm like, how is that sounding so good? So these amplifiers are awesome just on their own, obviously with the built-in speaker, or you can of course run them out into a much larger cab. So it kind of opens up the versatility of what you can get out of these amps and pair that with the tremolo. And of course that reverb that's built into it, you've got yourself a really great sounding little amplifier. Again, you'll have to find the Vox Pathfinder 15R on the used market. They just don't make them anymore. And I think they're arguably one of the best small practice amplifiers of all time. So well done Vox and bring them back with the reverb. Why? <laughs> Up next is another practice amplifier from Joyo. This is their DC-15S practice amp. Now, this has everything, yet it's very simple to operate, which is great. This has excellent tones across the board, arguably the best out of all of the digital modeling amplifiers on this list. You also get a more increased headroom as well. So you can turn this amplifier up a little bit more to get more volume if you need it, but it also sounds great at a low volume. Now, this is more like a regular amplifier. We get all the controls on the top we could need just to dial in the sound we have in our head. So this already simplifies the entire process. You don't need a phone. You don't need to do any of that stuff. You can just simply use the amplifier to dial in the best sound. Now, this has looping functionality as well, which is one of my favorite things about it. It was actually the feature that ended up making a couple of my friends buy them. They're like, that looper is so good. And it also comes with a channel switcher. So you can go from clean to your lead tone, by using the provided foot switch while you're looping or just while you're practicing. So they made a really functional, great sounding amplifier here. Now this also has a built-in rechargeable battery and you can also run it, of course, on the power supply. So it's portable. I remember a couple of times when my power went out when I was living up in the hills that I could just use this amplifier to play either music through or just have a jam even with the power off. So that's pretty cool too. So if you wanna just take this and go busking or do any type of street performing, that's what we call it in Australia. This is also a really good choice too. Now this also allows us to have a noise gate. So when you stop playing, the amp will gradually just close the sound of the amp. So you don't hear any sort of buzz or hiss or anything coming through the speaker. It's a really great feature. Additionally, there's some dials on the top of the amplifier for changing the modulation delay and reverb. So you've got hardware keys that allow you to do this. You don't have to, again, dive into any sort of menu system here. There's an auxiliary out on the back so you can record nice and simply, and that sounds great. And I showcased that in my review video. I just think overall, the drum machine paired with the looper is awesome. So if you want a really great practice amplifier that has all the different tones from clean to crunch to high gain tones, this is a really great choice. And the simplicity and sound of this really spoke for itself on my review video. And again, a few of my good friends have now bought this amp and they're really impressed with it. So definitely check out this one. This next amplifier is kind of like the biggest brother of the new XBT Lite Mark II that I showcased earlier. It has all of the same great app connectivity and functionality, but it has more output. This is rated at 30 watts. Now, being that it's rated at 30 watts, you would expect it to be super loud and super clear throughout the entire range of the volume, which isn't the case. Again, like most of these smaller practice amplifiers, I still consider this a small amp. The onboard speakers do cap out at a certain volume depending on the sound or bass response that you're running. So you just have to fiddle around with the EQ per preset. Now, the good thing about this particular amp is on the top, we get a three band EQ and a presence control. So you can make this work at much louder volumes than most of the other amps because you can just roll down the bass if it's too bassy or if the speakers are sort of maxing out. 
I think where this amplifier shines is on the back. Now this can of course be used as a dedicated audio interface. We get that option as well, but we also get one of the best features on here, which is this speaker out right in the middle. So I can power any cabinet just by plugging it into here. I think it's an eight ohm output. So you can essentially run this into any eight ohm speaker cab that you've got, meaning that you can run it into a much larger speaker and being it's a, that it's a 30 watt amplifier, this is loud enough to gig with. It was so loud and I showcased that on my review video. Running this into any 12 inch speaker cab, it's going to sound so much better than the onboard speaker. So if you're in a situation where you're happy playing at lower volumes, just on a desk as a desktop amplifier like this, you can use the onboard speakers. But if you want to rock out or jam with friends, you can hook it up to a much larger cab and use this as a dedicated head. This really separates it from most of the other amplifiers on this list with the exception of the Vox Pathfinder 15R that I covered earlier. That's got this same sort of functionality, but in modern sort of digital modeling amplifiers like this, you don't find that option very often. And this is an all-in-one recording device. That USB output is phenomenal. You can get much better recorded guitar tones that way going directly into your computer as you might be able to if you're inexperienced miking up a cab. So there's plenty to like about this. You get great clean tones, great dirty tones. It has all the different effects under the sun. And it's by far one of my favorite amps on this list. I have no plans on moving this on. I think it's an absolute killer. Furthermore, it also has a built-in battery that you can fully charge, a wireless pack as well that I got with this. So you can basically run it either wirelessly or a second guitar input can go directly into the front. So it comes with everything, except I don't know where the wireless pack part is. I used it recently and I've just plonked it down and misplaced it. But yeah, this really does cover all bases when it comes to playing electric guitar. If you own one of these or if you've had a chance to use one, let me know what you think of it in the comment section. This next amplifier, you'll either love it or you'll hate it. And I see all of this in the comment section on my video. Some people who bought this amp don't love it. And other people that bought it say it's the best practice amp ever. So I'm putting it on the list because I had a really positive experience with it. And that's the Yamaha THR30 Mark II. Now, first up, I love this desktop amplifier. Not only does it have this great sort of retro look, it has a backlit design. So it has some LEDs sort of on the inside of the grill that really look cool. But furthermore, it has a built-in battery, so you don't have to always keep it connected to the power. And it sounds great. It has a really produced guitar track sound, which I really like. So whether or not you want to use it with an app or anything like that, you can dial this amplifier in and get a really great sound in the room. You can, of course, also like most of the other amps on this list, use it as a dedicated audio interface. So you can just plug it directly into the computer and get that produced guitar track directly on your recording. I think in you know 2024 and beyond, this is by far the easiest way to record. And also one of the cheapest ways to record is to use some of these less expensive amps. This one's a little bit more expensive, but just generally speaking, most of these amps sound great and they sound the same plug directly in in audio interface mode. One of the things that really separates this amplifier from the rest is its simplicity. Now you can just simply use one of the controls on the top or a little wheel thing to cycle between each of the tones. You go from clean to crunch to high gain tones at the switch of a button or switch of a dial or whatever the case may be. So it's really easy to get the tone that you want to start with. And then you can start bringing in other effects if you so choose. So this also has all the other effects like delays and modulations, all that kind of stuff as well. And it also gives you the option if you don't want to use that USB-C output to record, you can go into a mixer or whatever using a left and right output on the back of the amp. <laughs> At the end of the day, you gotta make your mind up whether or not you like the retro design of this and if you like what you've heard of the sound samples. This amplifier definitely won't be for everybody and I've seen that in the comments section. So yeah, definitely do your research with this one. You'll either love it or you won't depending on the style of music you play. But I really enjoyed my time with this amplifier. I'll link my review video in the playlist that you'll find in the description. Up next is the Marshall DSL-5CR. Now I've really sort of deliberated which Marshall amp to put on this list because I've tested so many. The MG style amplifiers, those digital modeling and solid state amplifiers sound fantastic. But I really like this for a couple of different reasons which we'll talk about. Now first up, this is a combo. It's a full blown tube or valve amplifier, which is fantastic. We get a 10 inch 30 speaker. So this is a Celestian speaker and it's a quality one as well. So you're getting a great tone. It's a two channel amp. So we get our clean tone 
and we get our ultra gain tone. So the ultra gain tone is that higher gain tone that Marshall are known for, but you can back the gain off and still make it work. Now, being that this is a five watt amp, you might be thinking a five watt amp with a 10 inch speaker, it's going to be too loud, right? It has a switch on the back that allows you to knock the output power down to 0.5 watts, which makes it perfect for most situations where you don't want to annoy anybody. So if you're in a situation where your walls are really thin or someone's living above or below you, this might still be too much just based on its overall frequency response where you might want to choose a desktop style amp. But I love this. If you live in a place where you just don't want to be too loud, but you want a great tone, this amplifier definitely delivers. <laughs> This amplifier is loaded with a really nice reverb, which I, I think was digital from memory, much like my DSL 40CR back here. But it also gives us a deep switch, which can add or take away low end, which makes it a really great recording amplifier. I love this. While it doesn't have the classic crunch channel that most people love on Marshall amplifiers, the clean and the ultra gain channel at 5 watts or 0.5 watts will definitely be a whole lot of fun. It takes pedals great as well. Again, if you're a pedal player, these valve amplifiers are definitely the way to go. All right, so that's my list of the best practice amplifiers that I've used personally. So let us know if I've missed anything or if you saw something come up on the channel that should have been added into this list, let me know too. I've tried my best to collate all of the ones that really stood out in my mind and that were fresh in my mind. And these ones really are that nice. So if you own any of these, or again, if I've missed something, comment below, let us know what you think should have been on this list. This is just based on my own personal experience with these amplifiers. And again, I haven't tested everything out there, of course, but yeah, if you want to check out any of these amps, I'll link them down below. The playlist to all of the amplifiers in this list that I've reviewed is also down in the description. So if you want to see a full-blown review, you can check that out. Thanks again for watching. My name's Shane. I will catch you soon. See ya.